Welcome to the Leadership Decoded podcast. Here, we provide you with actionable tactics and practical techniques for you to lead at your very best at work and in your everyday life. I'm your host, Dr. Will Ramey, a former U.S. Army officer and combat veteran, and a current team and leadership development workshop facilitator and executive education adjunct professor. Today, we're diving into the frigid waters of Antarctica in order to understand leadership principles, especially leading under pressure and leading through crisis. We're going to do this by drawing correlations between Sir Ernest Shackleton's heroic rescue and his unparalleled leadership under pressure as he saved the lives of his 27-member crew who survived Antarctica for over two years while stranded waiting for rescue. Leadership under pressure happens to us all. Understanding how to do it, how to navigate difficult situations, and how to lead like an explorer is something that we can all benefit from. So as cold as it may be, let's dive in. This episode is brought to you by Sweat Tent, the industry leader of the portable at-home wood-burning sauna. Being a leader can be stressful. That's why I've been a sauna user for many years. Did you know that consistent sauna usage three to four times a week not only relieves stress and improves sleep, but it also enhances your physical well-being and fosters mental resilience and cognitive clarity to be a better leader? And you no longer have to go to a crowded gym or buy one of those expensive and bulky at-home setups to experience the benefits of a sauna. Sweat Tent is the most portable and affordable at-home sauna on the market. The setup takes minutes and can reach 200 degrees in under 30 minutes. Harness the power of the Sweat Tent Sauna to lead with clarity and poise. Sweat out stress, ignite creativity, and emerge a more focused leader. All Leadership Decoded listeners will receive $100 off when you use code LEAD100. Visit sweattent.com today to get $100 off your purchase with code LEAD100 at checkout. Again, that's sweattent.com to get $100 off with code LEAD100. Sweat Tent, improving your ability to lead at work and in your everyday life. This episode is brought to you by CNG Tutoring. Founded by Janelle and Chris Seaton, CNG Tutoring is Northeastern Pennsylvania's leading tutoring service. Our experienced state certified tutors provide personalized one on one sessions tailored to each student's unique learning style. From math and science to reading, writing, and even Spanish, we cover it all. We also offer top notch SAT prep designed to help students sharpen the skills they need to achieve their goals on the SAT. Join the countless families who trust CNG Tutoring with award winning educators and a five star parent rating. We offer in person and virtual tutoring using 20 21st century learning techniques. Visit cngtutoring.com today and start your child's journey to academic excellence. CNG Tutoring, ignite your mind. This episode is brought to you by Fit AF. As a leadership coach, I understand the importance of fueling both body and the mind. Balancing coaching sessions, workshops, and personal development can be demanding, and that's where Fit AF steps in. Fit AF offers an ever-changing menu crafted by top chefs and nutrition experts to ensure you're getting the best quality meals. Their diverse selection caters to various dietary preferences and needs, including keto, paleo, vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, and more. As a valued listener, enjoy an exclusive offer. Get 20% off your first order of seven meals or more by using code LEADER at checkout at fitafnutrition.com. Again, that's code LEADER for 20% off your first order of seven meals or more at fitafnutrition.com. Ernest Shackleton's story is one that I have read time and time again. His book, or the book, Shackleton's Way, captures his experience as the leader of the expedition on the Endurance as they were moving to explore the South Pole. So Ernest Shackleton came about in the time right before World War I, before we looked at our military leaders as our, as our heroes and our leadership icons. Ernest Shackleton was a leadership icon in his day. He is one of the greatest leaders of all time leading under extreme pressure imagine being stranded in one of the most inhospitable places on earth antarctica the south pole through the winter season there's no immediate help there's no cell phones there's no there's no uh, radio shackleton managed to keep his crew alive and hopeful in spite of the challenges around him, in spite of the environment around him. And he did this through his ability to lead in a cool, calm, collected manner. He made tough decisions, and he inspired his crew 
to maintain their eye on staying alive and getting home. And they all did. One key aspect of Shackleton's leadership under pressure was his focus on the well-being of his team. He understood that maintaining morale was crucial for survival. He understood that being able to focus on and, and be empathetic and gear his leadership towards maintaining a optimistic, up, upbeat, realistic approach with his team was going to help them through. He also set up a system to where he had daily routines. He kept spirits high through social activities and social engagements. They celebrated holidays. They broke out small things, small tokens, such as a warm beverage to celebrate uh, you know, a, a Christmas day. And it was those things that they look forward to to help keep them going. And Shackleton also ensured open communication. He was transparent with what was happening, what was being decided, why it was being decided, and that's what allowed his team to keep focus on the task at hand and the long-term objective. His leadership teaches us that in times of crisis, specifically, prioritizing the emotional and mental well-being of your team has a big impact on successful outcomes. So when you're faced with crisis, Shackleton's approach was very methodical and it was human-centered. It was people-first leadership. His crisis management skills can be broken down into several key strategies. Now think about some of these strategies as it applies to your work. Whether you have tight deadlines, whether you have a, a looming business deal, you had something that fell through unexpectedly, you had a shift in the environment that you work in, a shift in industry standard, a shift in government policy that may impact your work. The first key strategy was being decisive. Shackleton never hesitated to make a tough decision. He had to decide whether to abandon ship, the endurance, when it was crushed by, uh, by ice. He had to decide whether it was going to be worth the risk to cross ice flows that are so treacherous that move and shift and crack underneath the waters at a moment's notice. But his decisiveness is what instilled confidence in his team. Once a decision was made, he moved forward. But the second strategy, he was also flexible. Shackleton was, was remarkable at adaptation. If there was a new piece of information, if there was a, a new uh, circumstance or circumstances shifted, he was ready to adapt his plan. He was ready to shift and change plans based on the new environment, based on the new conditions. The flexibility uh, is crucial in crisis management. If you have a rigid adherence to your initial plan, you're going to fail. You've got to be able to set conditions where you can take in new information, understand the shifting environment around you, and adapt and be flexible to that change. The third strategy that Shackleton embraced was communication. Clear, honest communication. This is what the cornerstone of Shackleton's strategy was. He kept his crew informed about the situation. He kept them informed about the plans. He built trust and reduced anxiety in his team by doing this. Think about information flow where you work. Is it held centrally or are you able to share information? Is it readily available for people who need it? Information is a source of power. Share it, disperse it so everybody has an understanding of what needs to get done, what's happening and what's going to happen next. The fourth strategy was empathy. Shackleton was an empathetic leader. He ensured he understood and addressed the individual needs of his teams. He took care of people. He sacrificed for people so that his crew had everything they needed, big or small, in order to survive. What this fostered was a sense of unity and a sense of collective resilience. Everybody is in it together. We are moving forward together. We are embracing the difficult challenge together, and we'll get through it together. So Shackleton's ability to manage crisis effectively really provides us with invaluable leadership lessons, being decisive, being flexible and adaptable, communicating with good intent, clear, concise, transparent communication, and being empathetic, putting your, your team's well-being and emotional state at the forefront of your thought of, of your strategy and how you plan to move forward. 
for me, this came to life when I was leading the convoy for our maintenance unit from Kuwait to Iraq. I got tapped on the shoulder to lead the company convoy. We had trained for it in Fort Irwin, California, but this time it was the real deal. And it was a big undertaking. We had about 50 soldiers and uh, you know, 30 plus vehicles, and they were big, heavy pieces of equipment that we were carrying with us. And we had what was going to end up being a, a 24 to 36 hour convoy from where we were at in Kuwait to our operating base in Iraq. And that was daunting. I'll tell you, that was a daunting task. But what I was able to do was very similar to, to the leadership lessons that Shackleton did. And that I was able to draw from that. We had to be flexible to a changing situation. We don't know what the conditions are going to be. We don't know what the enemy is going to do. We can't predict what, what may happen if we get struck with an improvised explosive device or we have a mechanical breakdown. We can train for those events, but until they happen in real time, you can predict how you're going to react, but you truly don't know. So being flexible and adapting to a changing condition. 15 minutes into our convoy, our door latch broke on our Humvee. Here's my driver hanging on with one hand to the door and one hand to the wheel, and we've got to figure out and adapt to that situation. That wasn't planned for. So I took a piece of nylon cord, cut it out, we wrapped it around the handle, and we carried on without stopping the convoy until we got to our next checkpoint. Being able to clearly communicate what's happening, checking in with our team leaders pre-convoy, during the convoy, at the checkpoints, post-convoy, how are you, listening with empathy, checking in on their well-being, their physical state, their mental state, their spiritual state. I took that responsibility on as a leader to make sure my team had everything they needed to be successful. They got to eat first. They got to rest first. They were PMCS, uh, preventive maintenance controls and checks on their vehicles and equipment. My, and my non-commissioned officers were all-stars. Our team came together because we understood the bigger objective, arrive alive. Plain and simple. Nothing else mattered except for getting from point A to point B alive and all in one piece, all accounted for. That was our big objective. Any setback we had, we, we navigated together. Any change in environment, we got slowed up at a checkpoint. We had to make a decision. Do we push forward or do we, do we halt for the night? We decided to push forward. Once that decision was made, I made it and we stuck with it. We adapted to the environment. We took the information we had at the time and moved forward together. And I'm here thankful and fortunate to say that because of those great NCOs that I had, those great soldiers that I had, we arrived at our operating base successfully. And from time to time, I still bring up the picture because we all came in for a quick picture of our first major victorious milestone during our deployment was getting to our operating base in one piece. One of the proudest moments I had as a leader, and looking back on it, leading under pressure in an in a austere environment where people want to do you harm, I could leverage the leadership lessons of Ernest Shackleton. And so can you. The book Shackleton's Way offers several actionable leadership tips inspired by Shackleton's incredible journey. I want to share with you a few of the takeaways from the book to help you put them into, into practice and in play as you lead your teams. The first is leading by example. Shackleton always led from the front. He shared in the hardships. You have to get out with your team. Meet them where they're at. Go see them where they're working. Don't bring them to your office. Don't bring them to your, to your side workspace. Get alongside them. Roll up your sleeves. Work alongside your team so you can see the significant impact that they have, the struggles that they're dealing with, and then you can build that credibility and influence as a leader for your team. Second is cultivating resilience. Shackleton instilled a sense of resilience in his crew. He encouraged them to focus on what they could control and remain hopeful about what they couldn't. You can set the conditions for success, but you can only control so much. So leaders can foster resilience by helping your team develop this mindset and encourage a, a solution-oriented approach to overcoming challenges. The third is building a cohesive team. Shackleton understood the importance of team cohesion. So you don't just pick people who have the best skill sets or who are the most technically proficient. You've got to also think about people's ability to work with one another. 
You may not be the most technically proficient, but your technical skills are good enough and your interpersonal relationship skills are through the roof. I want that person all day, every day. People who are willing to support each other versus someone who's trying to be in the spotlight and shine as an individual. I want the supportive team player all day, every day. So being able to assess people's personality, their behaviors, their approach to work and put them on your team where you can and addressing those issues when you can will help you build a cohesive team. Maintaining optimism, I can't drive this home enough. Dire circumstances happen. Setbacks happen. You're going to have things that are negative. They're going to happen. You can control how you react. Shackleton remained optimistic. He instilled this optimism in his crew. He kept morale high by maintaining a routine, by maintaining positive tradition, by keeping your eye on the long-term objective. By maintaining a positive outlook, you can help ensure that your team will persevere through challenging times. And fifth is empowering your team. Shackleton empowered his team by giving them responsibilities. He trusted them to perform the tasks. People knew what was expected. And he also took time to boost their confidence and thank them for taking their initiative, for taking on those tasks. So you can do this by providing meaningful work, by tying people to a collective purpose, by giving them autonomy on how to, on how to execute their task at hand, and then rewarding or thanking and providing praise to them when they do a job well done. Shackleton's leadership during his uh, Antarctic expedition is remarkable. It's a, it's a top level example of leadership under pressure and leadership through crisis that we can all learn from. Prioritizing the well-being of others, embracing a servant leadership approach, being decisive, being adaptable, communicating clearly, setting routines, celebrating small wins, help Shackleton survive, and it will help you lead and build a high-performing team to achieve the outcomes that you're looking for. Thanks for tuning in to Leadership Decoded here in the Loop Internet Studio. If you liked today's episode and found value, leave us a comment, send us a review, share it with all your fellow leaders across all of our social media channels. We want to hear from you. Send in a topic that you want covered, whether it be leadership, team dynamics, or workplace culture, and we'll talk about it on the show because we are here to serve you and help you lead at your very best each and every day. And if you're an organization who's looking to invest in your team, strengthen your team dynamics, develop your future and emerging leaders, I want to work with you. I provide highly engaging, hands-on learning experiences that will help you be more collaborative, communicate better, and set the conditions for your team to succeed and for your leaders to emerge so that you're ready to take on any task at hand. You can connect with me on LinkedIn at Dr. William Ramey or email me here at will at onthestacks.com. Thanks for tuning in to Leadership Decoded. I'm your host, Dr. Will Ramey, and I'll see you the next time you press play.